Good evening and welcome. You're watching the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal. As relations between India and Canada worsen, what happens next? Will Trudeau finally see reason? Or are things between Delhi and Ottawa likely to get a whole lot worse? That's my top focus on the news track. India puts Trudeau on notice. Trudeau isolated and ignored. Visas blocked, properties seized. Supari posters removed in Surrey. Trudeau forced to tone down. Will this escalate or cool down? Big focus on news track. What's also clear now is the role being played behind the scenes by the United States in giving evidence, in quotation marks, to Canada, which enabled Trudeau to go out and make these allegations in public. India is in backing down a massive crackdown launched on Khalistani elements and their assets in Punjab and elsewhere. I'll track all of that for you. Let's get started. Here are the headlines today. Prime Minister Modi's all-out attack on the Congress says the party has handed over reins to urban Naxals. PM declares he's the only one who can fulfill guarantees. AIA DMK exits the NDA ahead of the 2024 elections, blames Tamil Nadu BJP chief Anna Malai for the breakup. India today accesses Khalistani terrorist Gurpatwant Pannu's dossier. Documents reveal Pannu was engineering a plot to radicalize Kashmiris. All his Chandigarh properties have been seized by the NIA. Big boost to the Indian Air Force C-295 transport aircraft inducted by the Defence Minister will be used to paradrop troops and cargo. India begins its goal hunt at the Asian Games women's cricket team and the 10-meter air rifle trio of Rudrangsh Patil, Aishwari Thomar and Devansh Pawar win the gold medal. As the diplomatic standoff between India and Canada gets worse, India has started cracking down on Khalistani elements back home. Properties of designated terrorist and Hardeep Nijjar's lawyer, Gur Patwant Pannu, have been seized. The NIA has also named more Khalistani supporters who are active overseas. That's not all. Overseas citizenship cards of Khalistanis are also likely to be cancelled. A bogus, non-binding exercise aimed at diasporic seats. A so-called Punjab referendum asking participants whether they want the Sikh majority Punjab in India to become a separate Khalistan. The man behind the sham project, Gurpatwan Singh Pannu, a lawyer of joint US and Canadian citizenship who seeks for justice communities proscribed by India. The 56-year-old supporter of Khalistan, born in village Khankot of Amritsar and now based in the United States. He was declared a terrorist by India in 2020. Pannu named in more than a dozen criminal cases, some of them linked to terror and other violent activities. The NIA has intensified its crackdown on Pannu. Over the weekend, two of his properties were confiscated in Amritsar and Chandigarh. And so was his agricultural land in his ancestral village of Khankot in Amritsar district. Slain Khalistani supporter and designated terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar was one of advocates of Pannu's sham Khalistan referendum in Canada. As per sources, overseas citizenship cards and passports of Khalistani supporters involved in vandalizing Indian consulates abroad will now be cancelled by India. 
Indian agencies sharing their details with airports to keep a tab on their movements. The NIA has also finalized a list of 19 Khalistani fugitives who are part of anti-India plots. Most of them living in the US, the UK, Canada, Dubai and Pakistan. The action comes amidst diplomatic escalation between India and Canada over Niger's murder. With Shreya Chatterjee, Bureau Report, India Today. I want to go across live at this moment to the Toronto Indian Consulate. Joining me from there is my colleague Anisha Mathur, as India Today is the only Indian news channel to have a reporter on the ground in Canada. And Anisha has been reporting live throughout the weekend since this story broke. Anisha, give our viewers at the outset a net sense of what you've picked up. You've been there now for 48 hours plus. You've had an opportunity to feel the pulse of how this story is being decoded, deconstructed in Canada. Uh, give our viewers a sense of what you've picked up so far. the consulate in Toronto where the police has put out barricades and uh, I'm just showing you there's uh, some bit of police presence protesters from Sikhs for Justice are expected here today but what is interesting is uh, these this sense that we are getting in Canada is that a large number of people in Brampton in uh, the suburbs of Toronto where which have a large uh, Indian population this uh, the Khalistan issue has been something that has been for a while we've been seeing uh, sort of uh, uh, the this increase in amount of uh, anti-India, anti-Hindu um, sentiment in Brampton in as well as other areas. There were in the last year we've seen at least uh, four instances where uh, vandalization was done at temples and this has created a sense of uh, unease and discontent among the Indian citizens, even as all of them continue to say that, well, for the last several years, we've all been living in harmony, there has never been a problem. But in the last year or so, there seems to have been a larger number of incidents and a larger presence of aggressive young men who are raising these issues. We've seen, of course, in Surrey, which is on the other side of the country, uh, in Vancouver, um, much mu this the situation is much more. Here, at least on the East Coast in Toronto, in Ottawa, people continue to say that, well, you know, this is about uh, about 5% of the Sikh population which is actually supporting the Khalistani movement, but they are a very aggressive, very, very um, loud a minority which is sort of also uh, uh, worrying the people who are living here and it is also becoming see, uh, being seen as a reflection of the real politic of Canada itself the economic situation the power that uh, the vote banks hold here especially with the, the Trudeau government being a minority government the, uh, the fact that the uh, the Liberal Party has uh, okay. supported the, the Khalistan uh, uh, movement so far. The, the fact that the NDP uh, has a sizable Sikh, pop uh, Sikh voter base and the fact that now with the Conservative Liberals and the NDP uh, uh, f uh, trying to fight it out to see what happens to the future of politics in Canada. Matur, thanks for joining us. We'll come back to you uh, for more later. Anisha will be in Toronto. Uh, she'll go to Ottawa, then to Vancouver and track this story from uh, Canada for us. Meanwhile, the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau hasn't been having a good week since the time he alleged uh, that Niger was assassinated by Indian agents. He's been ridiculed at home, his popularity ratings seem to have been a downward spiral and he finds himself now in the midst of a row over applauding a Nazi World War II veteran. It hasn't been a good week for the Canadian Prime Minister. It's been six days since he dropped the diplomatic equivalent of a nuclear bomb on India-Canada relations with this. Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijar. 
since then it's been an uninterrupted downslide for Justin Trudeau politically ridiculed diplomatically criticized and isolated even by his closest friends as we mark a week since Trudeau's quest to paint India the assassin of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Nijjar let's see how it's going for the Canadian Prime Minister for starters India hit back instantly with a visa blockade stunning team Trudeau Canada's conspicuous lack of reciprocal action not only showing weakness but the country's helpless dependence on Indian labor and workers in Canadian industry second Trudeau's attempts to rally the five eyes intelligence alliance the world's so-called anglosphere but each of those major powers the US UK and Australia provided only token words of support nothing near the kind of backing Trudeau was hoping for in this game of optics it was clear Prime Minister Trudeau was all alone in his mission against India the third big embarrassment for Trudeau the claim from one of his own allies that his allegations against India are based on open source information available on the internet uh, the only briefings uh, that I've been able to receive from CSIS are what are called open information briefings or open source uh, briefings which is information that's available to the public uh, uh, doing an internet search uh, which I find frustrating the fourth big blow to Trudeau were his plummeting popularity ratings with his political opposition using the moment to mount a ferocious attack on him I think we need to see more facts um, the Prime Minister hasn't provided any facts uh, he uh, he provided a statement um, and I will just emphasize that he he didn't tell me any more in private than he told Canadians in public so we want to see more information fifth and probably most embarrassingly Trudeau's closest government ally the Khalistan sympathetic Jagmeet Singh virtually threw the Canadian Prime Minister under the bus putting out this tweet where he cunningly fitted in a criticism of his close friend Trudeau in an unrelated issue hoping to offset the heat on himself sixth with the global glare now fixed on his accommodation of terrorists on his soil a shamefaced Trudeau had to order the offensive posters to be pulled down from the Surrey Gurdwara posters honoring terrorist Nijjar and calling for the killing of Indian diplomats seventh with India stepping up the pressure and seizing Indian properties of 19 Khalistani terrorists including several based in Canada Trudeau will likely begin to face unbearable heat from the very section he's been trying to milk for politics and finally with a list of Canadian Khalistanis whose PIO and OCI green cards are all set to be cancelled ending their chances of easy travel to India Trudeau will face the music from extremists who took their India linkages for granted thus far as you can see it hasn't been Trudeau's week Bureau report India today so will Justin Trudeau and Canada see the light of reason will they do more than just pull down hoardings and posters of Khalistani terrorists and if not where do India Canada ties go from here will there be further escalation it's also very clear that America playing a role in supplying some form of intelligence to Canada which enabled Justin Trudeau to make the statements last week to talk about this and more I'm joined on this broadcast by Terry Milevsky uh, those who have been watching India today over the last several months will know that Terry has been reporting researching and writing a lot about the menace of Khalistani terrorism inside uh, Canada with us is Abhijit Ayar Mitra senior research fellow at the Institute of Peace and Conflict Studies Brahma Chalani is joining us uh, from advisor to India's National Security Council everything he's saying and writing about Canada and India uh, seems to be whirling at this moment Vivek Khadju joins us former secretary in the Ministry of External Affairs and I have just Sardar Jodjit Sabarwal spokesperson of the BJP I want to go across first to Terry Milevsky we've seen over the weekend in some of the Gurdwaras where hoardings and posters had been put up asking for Indian diplomats to be attacked assaulted killed you know someone's taken them down this could be the Canadian government these could be people at the Gurdwara we don't know but in Canada those hoardings seem to have come down do you see Justin Trudeau and the Canadian government try and de-escalate tensions 
or are they looking to up the ante even further? Where do you see this go from here, Terry Milevsky? It's possible that there was a, a, a um, small-scale tactical move to eh, maybe we shouldn't. This isn't the right time uh, to have these posters in people's faces, as it were. Right now, it's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? And that reflects an important development in this affair, I think, namely that at the beginning of this affair, the Khalistanis in Canada uh, were jumping for joy. You see. The, the Prime Minister himself has now endorsed our point of view that the Indians are out there killing Khalistanis, and this is a triumph for us. Well, of course, the problem was that the uh, spotlight of publicity when trained upon the Khalistanis, to which most Canadians rarely pay any attention at all, was an embarrassing spotlight because people started to realize, oh, you mean these are the people, they're putting up what posters? They're putting up posters of the worst mass murderer in Canadian history, the Kanishka bomber, Talvinda Pama. He's got a life-size martyr poster glorified on the side of a major Gurdwara. Then they started to notice, who is this character, Panoon? They don't know who this Panoon character is from Soho Seeks for Justice, the guys who are running the referendum campaign. Well, what's wrong with the referendum? Now they're looking more closely and they're seeing, oh, Panoon is putting out these videos. Uh, he's the one that named the referendum campaign after Tovinda Pama. Hanun is the one who was, oh, we saw that video of him burning the Indian flag. And what about the one, the video where he, which he calls I Am Dilawar, in which he steps into the shoes of famous assassins like the suicide bomber who killed Chief Minister Bayant Singh of of Punjab in 1995 and more. What about Panoon's signs and posters calling upon Sikh soldiers fighting in the north to desert the Indian army and go fight for the Chinese? And more and more and more, including, of course, more recently, the killer posters naming and shaming Indian diplomats, painting targets on their backs uh, and calling them killers. So people are now learning what they have been ignoring for many years. This has been going on for 40 years. The Canadians have been looking the other way, not taking much interest, and taking the view that it doesn't concern them. Uh, what the Khalistanis are doing in Canada, it's an Indian problem. None of, it's not our problem. Well, uh, now they're being reminded, are they not, that uh, most of the passengers who died in the Kanishka bombing were Canadian citizens. So I think they're not jumping for joy anymore. Abhijit Ayer Mitra, we are being told that the Americans provided some of the signal, human, technical intelligence, uh, which forms part of the basis why Justin Trudeau spoke the way that he did. You know, and it's a bit rich coming from the United States, which very actively and openly goes out and takes down terrorists who have been hurting American interests. But yet, in this case seems to be wanting to preach morality in the absence, in the complete absence of putting forth even a shred of evidence. Even the Canadian opposition leader we saw in that report was asking for proof. Um, absolutely, Rahul. Uh, before I start, Rahul, do you know who François Mario Bashand was? Okay, go on. Tell us. Um, he was actually a chap associated with the Front de Libération de Quebec. And Justin Trudeau's father, Pierre Trudeau, ordered his assassination. So the predecessor of the CSIS, the current Canadian Intelligence Service, carried out his assassination in Paris in 1971. 1971, incidentally, was the same year that Canada was pretty much supporting Pakistan, carrying out a genocide in Bangladesh uh, next to us. Right. Now, uh, what do you call a country? And Canada has a long history of providing refuge to genocides, to mass murderers, to uh, criminals. The latest example you saw was a Ukrainian Nazi being uh, fated on the floor of Canadian Parliament. But let's not forget the Deputy Prime Minister of Canada, Christia Friedland, whose grandfather, Mr. Uh, Cholmiak, was a known Nazi who used to put out lists of Jews for the German army to go kill. And Miss Friedland herself worked for a Ukrainian-Canadian newspaper that used to run advertisements and stories glorifying Nazis and the Ukrainian participation in uh, Nazi war crimes. Uh, Canada has also supported a lot of... Uh, Canada was one of the prime areas for entity funding, Rahul. Uh, 
Uh, you know, a lot of LTT funding used to get raised in Canada, and, you know, that resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people, the rape, killing, maiming, God knows what not of hundreds of thousands of people. Now, what do you call a country like that? Is that country your friend or your partner? But more importantly, addressing your question, what do you call a country that spies on you and serves up intelligence to a country that is a home for genocides, terrorists, and specifically terrorism aimed at you? Does such a country get a label of being a strategic partner? How? I don't know. We also need to be very, very clear, Rahul, that what we call Khalistan, there is no such thing as Khalistan. Khalistan is a joke. All right. Uh, uh, I can today, sitting in my house in Savdajang Enclave, declare it to be the Republic of Abhijitistan. And given the number of followers, I think I have more followers on Twitter than the Khalistan referendum has voters. So, you know, I think my claim of being an independent nation is more <laughs> legit. But we need to understand what this Khalistan is. It is an organized network of crime which does gun peddling and drug dealing across Punjab, whose back office operations. Now, Canadian firms, Canadian banks have their BPOs in Delhi, uh, across India. Uh, crime operations in Punjab have their BPOs in Canada. And what they do is basically this entire Khalistan sham is when you get accused of crimes to cite political repression. Uh, you, can't be, you can't be arrested for political dissidents. Of course, Justin Trudeau arrests you for political dissidents as well. Remember, uh, they labeled this uh, uh, Ukrainian Nazi yesterday a freedom fighter, whereas he was calling his own truckers, protests, uh, terrorists, and far-right Nazis. He actually called them Nazis. But what happens here is they're using this loophole to claim that their drug running and gun dealing is basically uh, a, a front for freedom, and there being any action against them is a repression for freedom. I think you know a very famous Indian journalist who does tax evasion but claims she's being oppressed for, you know, uh, uh, her views. Uh, pretty much the same game out here. Okay. Uh, Brahma Chelani, what do you see happen next? Uh, we're seeing some forms, uh, some suggestions of Trudeau wanting to calm things down just a bit, but he's done all the damage by exploding this diplomatic nuclear tactical weapon. Uh, do you think things will get worse or is Trudeau likely to see some form of reason or is that too much to expect? I think it's in the interest of both Canada and India to arrest the downward spiral in relations. And fortunately, there have been no new moves by either side to trigger countermeasures by the other side since, um, since at least Friday. So there might be some pulling of tensions but the problem is that Trudeau has painted himself in a corner. He has presented no evidence to back his allegations against India. Instead, one of the unintended consequences of his action in leveling allegations against India is that it has helped to shine a spotlight on Canada's sorted record of harboring extremists, war criminals, and terrorists not just from India, from, from multiple countries. So now the spotlight is on Canada. It's because, partly because of the India allegations that Trudeau has made, and also now because of Friday developments, when the Canadian Parliament gave a standing ovation to a Nazi who now lives in Canada. So people are, are waking up to the reality that Canada has become a safe haven for all kinds of extremist terrorists and war criminals. And I think that in a situation like this, uh, in which Trudeau finds himself um, cornered, unable to convince his own people at home, people within Canada are demanding that he present some evidence against India. In this situation, what New Delhi can do is to just watch developments quietly, and this is what New Delhi is doing. Terry Milevsky, how do you explain this Nazi Ukrainian getting a standing ovation? It's almost as if the Trudeau government doesn't do any basic background checks. It's embarrassing at another point. I mean, it's yes. the height of wokeness it or the is, height of is. pointlessness. 
It is embarrassing, and it's not the first time this has happened. You may recall Trudeau's first visit to India in 2018 when he had a terrorist invited to dinner. A convicted Khalistani terrorist was invited to dinner with the Prime Minister at the uh, Canadian High Commissioner's residence in New Delhi on an official, official visit. And nobody realized this wouldn't look very good. And, of course, it was a fiasco. So th uh, there have been examples previously of bad judgment by the Prime Minister's entourage. This was... Uh, this was a screw-up. There's no way around it. But uh, simply because um, his staff screwed up, the uh, vetting wasn't done properly, nobody realized that this, was, this veteran was fighting on the other side, uh, that doesn't change the, the facts of the matter with respect to the, uh, the killing of Mr. Najjar. That's still the main issue, and the rest of it is kind of off the point to me. Uh, that point remains that right now, the onus is definitely on Trudeau to produce evidence, and he has failed to do so beyond this sort of daily drip drip of small leaks. The latest one suggesting that the, India, that the Canadians did give at the official level to the Indians at the official level before Modi uh, weeks ago uh, some details, for example, that they had the signals intelligence, they had additional intelligence from the United States, and that they had phone numbers, wiretaps. Uh, which indicated a connection. Now, they haven't proved a word of this. They need to do that. And there's no excuse for Trudeau not presenting his evidence. You know, he says he doesn't want to interfere with the investigation. He's already done that. He's announced its conclusion, for heaven's sake, by kicking out an Indian diplomat. But on the other side of the ledger, remember, Mr. Modi knows what Trudeau told him. Mr. Modi didn't uh, sit there like a potted plant when he met with Trudeau uh, in New Delhi at the end of the G20. Mr. Modi would not have rejected the Canadian allegations if he didn't even know what they were. I mean, that's inconceivable. So he knows what they were, and I don't know what prevents him stepping up and saying, look, Trudeau doesn't want to produce his evidence because it's so weak. It's rubbish, and I can prove it because I know what he's saying, and here's why it's rubbish. Now, that would be game over. That would be a big victory for Mr. Modi. But he doesn't seem willing to do that, does he? Not yet. I find that interesting. Let's put it no more strongly than that. Vivek Kaju, now in the way that uh, things are unfolding, two or three things are clear. One, the Americans, our strategic allies and friends, seem to be snooping on our diplomats. Uh, God alone knows where, but most certainly in Canada. Secondly, that they seem to have some signal intelligence to suggest that some Indian diplomats are involved. You've served in so many embassies, high commissions, you've served India internationally. Do you find that plausible, an Indian raw operative? I mean, first, we don't know if we did it. Even if we did it, the most natural way to do it would be through an Indian deep state asset, uh, engaging some criminal gang in, in Canada, getting a hit organized, doing it through a diplomat sitting in Canada. That just seems like the most amateur way of doing this. Uh, Rahul, uh, permit me to make a few points. The first is uh, that I think uh, Mr. Trudeau went overboard uh, in using the kind of language that he did in leveling charges against India uh, in his parliament. That is point one. Point two. Uh, you asked me about the intelligence game. In my uh, career as a diplomat, I always presumed that uh, people were snooping. And uh, you took basic precautions to prevent people from snooping. This is a game that is played internationally, and uh, I would not go further than that. Second. A third, and I think this is the relevant point, and this is a point that Terry should appreciate. At least in India, prime ministers and political leaders do not speak in matters relating to police investigations. These are matters, a murder investigation is for the police, and it is the police that has to take charge of it and proceed with it. The next point, even if the Americans, and please note, I'm stressing the point, even if the Americans have given intelligence, 
right? We do not know what is the nature of that intelligence. But the question is whether such intelligence would be admissible in a court of law. Uh, my own understanding is, at least under the Indian legal system, there is a difference between information, intelligence, and evidence that is admissible under the criminal procedure court and under the penal court. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that in Commonwealth, uh, in Canada, it's much the same. So, per se, per se, if you have procured intelligence through means that are not sanctioned, say, by the Vienna Convention, you can do nothing about it. No, but Abhijit Ayer, do you buy one, this argument uh, no, no, that there is one, signal? No, one last sentence. Okay, very quickly. Please, wait, wait, yes, Mr. Yeah, Kaj. Yeah, yeah, uh, just one sentence. It is a strange situation that Canada is asking India to convert this intelligence or whatever they have into evidence to self-incriminate itself. Where in the world do you expect anyone to do that? Terry should understand that. Abhijit, do you buy the argument that there could be some signal technical intelligence which has Indian diplomats on the call where they are ordering some kind of a hit or part of this operation? Isn't that just the most Can amateur way of going about this operation even if uh, Ajit Doval and the Indian government are somehow involved? So, Rahul, so see, this is a three-part answer. Uh, the first part is, uh, you know, signals intelligence uh, is never what you see in movies. You know, it's not like, you know, uh, uh, a Canadian intelligence picked up me calling Rahul Kanwal saying, oh, Rahul, you know, we're going to kill Terry Milevsky tonight. Let's take that book behind him and bash him over the head with that. And, you know, boom, uh, you know, smoking gun. Uh, that happens in movies. It does not happen in real life. In real life, signals intelligence is extremely hard to interpret, extremely hard to crack, number one. Number two, when you reveal signals intelligence to uh, the person that you intend to investigate, that is India, you blow your sources of signal intelligence. You give away where it was collected from. If you remember, Narsimara was planning a uh, nuclear test. They, uh, the US ambassador showed him all the satellite imagery and the uh, signals intelligence. And then when Bajpai decided to do the nuclear test, the Americans were caught completely off guard because we knew what time their satellites were passing over. We knew the frequency of their intercepts, etc., etc., etc. So you blow that. The third part, uh, to add on to what Ambassador uh, Kartju said, is, you know, the problem here is what has been shared and segueing on to what Terry also said. What was all my government sources are telling me that what was given to the government was credible allegations no credible intelligence it's just that you know we've got you you better cooperate no specifics no uh, dates no times nothing about the nature of the intelligence what you have seen in public essentially what the premier of british columbia i think it was or mr eb what, uh, whatever he's the premier of what he got was what uh, was given to india and it was you better investigate Note, there has been another murder since then. A day before yesterday, a gentleman called Sukhdul Singh was killed in the ongoing uh, 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 gang warfare, which we call the Khalistan movement in Canada. Notice, nobody wants to talk about it. This should have technically, uh, you know, Justin Trudeau knowing him, he should have sold this up as, oh my God, India is so brazen after I've accused them, they've come and killed another guy on our side. Because they know that we didn't do it. They have no evidence. It's always credible allegations. Note, he has said credible allegations from day one, never credible uh, 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 intelligence. I want to go across to Sardar Jodjit Sabarwal of the BJP because in all the voices we are hearing from Punjab, they're saying, okay, this is a battle between two governments. But in your action of putting Canadian visas on hold for those who don't have uh, Canadian visas, uh, th those Canadians who don't have Indian visas, you're hurting people to people ties, you're impacting those who have family and friends in Canada. How does the BJP respond to this, uh, Mr. Sabawal? People do not and towards the culture, 
I, I don't hear him well. Just give me a moment to fix that connection. In the meanwhile, I just want to tell our viewers that amongst the Khalistanis being sheltered in Canada is Ashdio Singh Dalla. India today has accessed the Delhi police chart sheet against this Khalistani gangster, which reveals a stunning link to Pakistan's ISI and the lashkar e -Taiba. The series of killings of Khalistani terrorists in Canada have put the spotlight on Ashdeep Singh, also known as Ash Dala, a terrorist wanted in India. India today has access the Delhi police chart sheet against Ash Dala. The chart sheet sheds light on Ash Dala's and Hardeep Singh Nijjar's connections to the ISI and Lashkar-e Taiba. RSS leaders, Hindu seers, and Punjab Shiv Sena leaders were on the Khalistani hit list. The terrorists allegedly conducted recce while plotting an attack on the Shiv Sena leader. The revelations don't just end here. Arsh Dala and Lashkar were allegedly behind a murder in Delhi this year. The prime suspects, Jagjit and Noshad, allegedly killed a man by slitting his throat as part of a trial. The two suspects were allegedly paid money by Arsh Dala. Arsh Dalla, the man that we are talking about, was the man that agencies are after, has worked along with Nijar, Khalistani terrorist who is in fact in Canada. This is the man in fact on your screens, Arsh Dalla, a Khalistani terrorist who works and functions, lives in Canada. He is connected to two other terrorists, Noshat and Jarjit, who are the Khalistani terrorist in Delhi. Raj Kumar was the victim in this case where his throat was slit. This video was first then made and then sent to Arsh Dalla. This is the victim. In fact, this particular video that was sent by Noshat and Jagjit uh, to Arsh Dalla. The question is whether the ISI is trying to revive the Khalistani movement with the help of terror organizations based in Pakistan. Bureau report, India Today. The prospects of America supplying intelligence uh, to Canada in this entire matter, how seriously do you take that, Vivek Khadju? Do you think that America behind the scenes is using this as leverage to put pressure on India? Does this, should this make New Delhi more wary about how uh, we look at America because India has been tilting more westwards, embracing the United States? as a counterbalance to China as part of America's Indo-Pacific strategy, whereas actually in India's interest it is to be as close to being friendly with China as is possible. Look, uh, I'll say something uh, which I hope won't be misunderstood, because, but I'll say it bluntly. We should never, never overlook the solidarity that the Anglo-Saxon world has for each for themselves. And as a pointer to this, let me, po let me uh, point to AUKUS, the Australian, UK and US submarine, nuclear submarine project, where the Australians are going to build nuclear submarines on the technology supplied by the Americans, in which the French too have been excluded. We talk of code. So therefore, I'm this five eyes. What is this intelligence cooperation? It is the cooperation of the Anglo-Saxon world. They think the Anglo-Saxon world has this, this feeling of solidarity, which is almost, uh, how should I say, atavistic. It's primeval. And we should never overlook that. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't look at their greater interest, but when it comes to closing ranks, they have always done so. Let us not forget that. I'm sorry I'm putting it straightforward. You must absolutely. I think we should understand this. Abhijit, do you think this should make India more wary about embracing the United States uh, to the extent that it could potentially create problems for us going forward? Uh, absolutely, uh, Rahul, because look, you know, we have signed SISMOA, or at least our variant of SISMOA, I think it's called something else, uh, uh, you know, which is the interoperability agreement with the United States. Now, if the US is spying on us to this degree already, imagine what uh, interoperability will allow them to do. Uh, you know, that is spying literally on every single one of your units, where they are, what their ammunition levels are, uh, where they're deploying to, etc., etc. 
I think this raises a very, very big question on the India-US relationship, especially more so because the way the Five Eyes uh, agreement is structured isn't that it requires Antony Blinken or the president to say, yes, yeah, sure, share this intelligence with them. It's that countries that are have huge hostile constituencies to India, like the Pakistani-run BBC and, you know, the uh, uh, Pakistani-infiltrated uh, police services in Britain, or the Khalistani-infiltrated uh, 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 establishment in Canada, can just go into American intelligence and pick and choose what they want. Do not forget, Khalistanis in uh, uh, Canada cooperate very, very closely with Pakistan and the ISI. One of the reasons the Kartarpur corridor has been opened up is precisely because of this kind of uh, uh, collaboration that has been going on. There are too many second and third order consequences now of having any kind of intelligence sharing or interoperability with America after this episode. Jyotjit Sabarwal, how are you looking at the, the pressure from Punjab, the pushback from the Canadian diaspora, from the Punjabi Canadian diaspora, saying that your action has gone overboard, this should have been dealt with at a government, political, diplomatic level. Now too many f f family, friends are involved, it's unfair to them. for uh, Justin Trudeau to come into the parliament and speak on murder of uh, Hardeep Nijjar based on uh, Google information. That's very unfortunate. And, uh, you know, there have been movements in Canada. There have been movements led by separatists in Canada. You talk about Quebec, Nova Scotia, uh, Newfoundland, Labrador. India has never interfered. But Khalistanis have been openly, uh, you know, uh, organizing demonstrations, referendums, putting uh, uh, holdings, you know, calling for assassination of uh, Indian officials. And uh, Hadeem Nijar's son, uh, he just gave an, uh, he just gave a statement that uh, his father was in touch with the CSI, is the Canadian intelligence, and the Canadian intelligence uh, advised him to stay at home. That means somehow. Uh, I mean, it would not be wrong to argue that uh, the Canadian intelligence was protecting Mr. Nature. So um, there is nothing as such. Uh, I mean, we are late, but it's never too late. And whatever restrictions are being uh, put in place for the Khalistanis, it is a very good step. And uh, it is very pertinent here to mention that there is no harm in putting such restrictions. And in the coming days, we will see more such restrictions. I, okay, we're uh, already seeing an NIA clamp down on Khalistani terrorists and the Indian assets. And when people look at it, many would wonder, including those who are watching at this time, why wasn't this done earlier? Why did somebody like Gurpatwan Pannu have so much land, property in Chandigarh, Amritsar, etc.? Why wasn't this seized earlier? Like it has been for leaders of the Huriyat Conference, like it has been for can I, can, can I separatist leaders. Yes, yes, Mr. Sarwar, yes. please. See, there was a see. This is a whole conspiracy run by the Khalistani elements, and I would sum up in thirty seconds. Khalistanis, just like uh, Gurwan Singh Pannu, uh, Gurpatwan Singh Pannu. Now he said he uh, he's been asking Hindus to leave Canada and go to India. The basic motive behind this is they want to incite Hindus. They want to incite the Indian agencies. They want Hindus to retaliate and say that Sikhs should leave uh, Bharat. They want to create a narrative that Sikhs are unsafe in Bharat, whereas we are proud Indians and we, safe, we are safe in Bharat. The only thing is they want to defame India and they want to amplify their radicalization process because the more... Uh, unsatisfied and the more unsafe Sikhs uh, will feel in India, they are more prone to uh, join their movement, Khalistan. No, but also it's so a bit rich. It's a bit rich in conclusion, Abhijit, for all these Khalistani terrorists sitting in Canada to talk about an independent Punjab when most of them have absolutely no intention of coming back anywhere close to Punjab. They're living on their farms in uh, Canada very happily, so fomenting trouble but not wanting to come back. 
Absolutely, Rahul. And, you know, you do need to remember this is an organized crime network. The biggest victims of these Khalistanis are, in fact, Canadian Sikhs. Do you know the kind of terror Canadian Sikhs live under? Imagine a poor boy from, say, rural Batinda or rural Ludhiana landing up in Canada. Socially awkward. He has to depend on the... Uh, uh, on his uncles or aunties or whatever to get a job, to get accommodation, to get whatever. Uh, and that is entirely run as an extortion network. I myself remember lived in Australia. I faced this as a Tamil where you had to, I had to suppress my Tamil identity because in Melbourne, the LTT used to run extortion networks. Uh, it, it is in fact the future citizens of the so-called Khalistan who are the biggest victims of these so-called Khalistani leaders. Uh, I think everybody sees them for what they are, except apparently the Canadian government. Well, they can have a little Justin republic Trudeau. in Brampton, do their yeah. own thing over there, create as much trouble as they want for Justin Trudeau, because there's very little support for the Khalistani movement in India. There hasn't been since early 90s. Even at that time, it was only the fringe, Ranji. not the mainstream. Prime Minister Modi was in Madhya Pradesh today, where he launched a big attack on the Congress, addressing a rally in Bhopal. The Prime Minister said the Congress had outsourced its policy to urban Naxals. He also accused the India Alliance of betraying women of the country over the quota bill. Prime Minister Narendra Modi sounds the pole bugle in Madhya Pradesh. Modi started with a road show in Bhopal on Monday before addressing the Karyakarta Mahakum to mark the culmination of BJP's Yatra in the state. He was given a rousing reception by women workers of the BJP for getting the bill on women's reservation passed by parliament. The Prime Minister accused the opposition of trying to divide Nari Shakti. बांटने की पूरी कोशिश करेंगे नारी शक्ति एक न हो इसलिए बांती बांती की अफवाहें फैलाएंगे इसलिए देश की हर माता बहन बेटी को सावधान रहना होगा सतर्क रहना होगा और एक जुट रहना ही होगा Prime Minister Modi launched a frontal attack on the Congress, comparing it to a company being run by what he called urban Naxals. Congress ka theka ab kuch urban Naxaliyon ke paas hai. Congress mein ab urban Naxaliyon ki hi chal rahi hai. Isliye Congress jamil par bhi lagatar khokli ho rahi hai. Alleging years of misrule and corruption in the state under the Congress, Modi warned first-time voters against reposing their faith in the Congress. MP, I was in Congress, I was in Congress, I was in Congress, I was in Congress, and I was in साधन सबन मध्य प्रदेश को समर्थ युवाओं वाले मध्य प्रदेश को बीमारू बना दिया दोस्तों बीमारू बना दिया मध्य प्रदेश चीफ मिनिस्टर शिवराज सिंह चौहान इज बैटलिंग एंटी इनकम्बेंसी आफ्टर इयर्स इन पावर द पार्टी इज बैंकिंग ऑन मोदी पॉपुलैरिटी टू टर्न द टाइट ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे